So I'm here to tell you what being a science student at this university is actually like, which I think is a bit dangerous for them to get me up here to say things like that. So I would like to start off by explaining how I came about to choose science as, I guess, a career um, and why. And I guess it all comes down to the fact that I wanted to ask questions that had never been asked before, let alone answered. Um, and I wanted to be the person to find those answers and the only person to know them. Now, it may surprise you why I chose chemistry, because chemistry was actually my worst subject in the HSC. <laughs> but I loved it so much um, that I decided I'll do it anyway. And I definitely do not regret that decision. So the lesson in that is definitely do what you love. Do what uh, fascinates you and um, drives you to learn new things. Don't necessarily just do what you're good at, because it won't always lead you to success. So um, as David mentioned, I'm currently doing my honours year in chemistry. So that's four long, hard years of chemistry almost behind me. Um, but this uh, degree program, I guess, gave me lots of room for electives. Um, so I've actually studied courses like animal behaviour um, and marine and aquatic ecology, as well as all my chemistry courses. So there is a lot of scope for um, additional things if you're interested in things other than just the major that you've chosen. Um, so I guess it's pretty useless for me to mention that science helps you to think. It really does. It, that's what it teaches you but it also teaches you to challenge um, the thoughts and preconceptions of society. So we, as a science student, I find now, I read newspaper articles differently to the way that I did before I started my degree, and I question um, things in politics and who I vote for is so different now um, as it was before I started my degree, because it really does give you the ability to think outside the square and to question what's going on in your everyday life and the world around us. So I will now fill you in on what life, everyday life is like here. Uh, we have a fabulous student union called ARC um, that helps us get involved in everything. Um, I'm a tutor for a tutoring program, um, which some of you may actually know about because it helps local high school students who are struggling with material called Shack Tutoring. And I've actually been involved in that program for two years now. And the best feeling that I get out of that is seeing the person that I tutored in one of my lab classes that I demonstrate this year. So it really does give you an opportunity to give back with the skills that you've gained from your degree as well. Um, comes with society, so obviously as mentioned, I'm on the executive of two of the um, largest science societies on campus, um, which is really great because it means you get to meet other people who think like you. And it may actually really surprise you, but being surrounded by a whole school of people who all think differently, once you get together with the science students, um, sort of sparks light a fire. Um, and you find you have a lot more in common with people um, than you may not be used to, because when you come to university, like-minded individuals tend to gather. And that's what science gives you as well. So although Merlin said science isn't fun, I have to confess, it actually is. Um, you get a lot more out of this degree. And that's, the, I guess, the thing that I learnt that I found the most challenging, was that I found that I wasn't just here to get a piece of paper and leave, that I actually enjoyed being here. And more than that, I enjoyed the people that I met here and the things that we got to do together, which was really, really exciting. I must confess, I'm a veteran of the Toga Party and the October 1st parties, and they are definitely all that people have made, out them, made them out to be. Um, but also, you get the opportunity to go to other universities um, and learn new things as well. Now, I haven't personally been on an exchange program, but I've been on something similar, um, where we got to go on a study scholarship program to the Australian National University over summer. And that's, again, a melding of like-minded individuals. And I heard about this through my supervisor, so I never could have done that if UNSW didn't have the collaborations it does with all of the, the fantastic universities in Australia and all over the world. Um, I'm also a peer mentor, so when you come into university as a first year, you can elect to be set up with a peer mentor um, in your first year. And I have one student who I meet with once a week, um, every week for the first semester, and I get to have the rare opportunity to help her settle in. And in 10 years, who knows, she could be winning Nobel Prizes, and I feel like I potentially have helped her um, get there. So you do get to give back a lot, but also you get to um, have lots of guidance, not just from the academic staff, but also from the students that go to this university. Funny story, essentially, how I managed to get my, myself involved in all of these crazy things that I do uh, was at my first day of university, I went to a barbecue, first mistake, um, and I met the executive of the Advanced Science Society, then at the time called RSOC. I felt the obligation to change it later on. <laughs> um, and she, I don't know how, convinced me to come to an executive meeting and I left there their secretary. And the next year I was elected their president. So the moral of this story is keep your eyes and ears open for opportunities. You never know where they will hit you. 
uh, and make sure you say yes to everything that you can find. You may end up slightly deranged by the time you've been here for so long that you're doing honours, um, but it's definitely worthwhile and it definitely enriches you as a person. And so keep your eyes open for academic opportunities as well. Rather than just turning up for your courses when you have to and leaving and doing the exams, um, make sure you network with your lecturers um, and get to know them because these are the people that are going to be leading your research um, as you go through your degree. And also, if you find any opportunities to get into research, if that's what you want to do with your life, make sure you do it as early as possible. Don't wait till you go into honours or your PhD to get involved with a research group. Uh, in second year, I got to present work at a conference and I thought that was something really great because that's something that I, you know, research is something that I want to do. So I had to make sure that that's what I wanted to do with my life. So if you get yourself involved um, in situations where you get to be in a laboratory if you're doing a physical science or work in collaboration with um, people who are doing their PhDs and lecturers who've been here um, in some cases for very many years with lots of experience, um, you'll find out whether research is really what you want to get yourself into. As for myself, um, as David mentioned, hopefully, being the operative word, um, I get to go over to the UK to complete my PhD. I'm actually going over in September for, for another conference, where hopefully I'll get to present more of my work um, and hopefully mingle with some potential supervisors um, up in Durham, which is the very north of the UK. So um, who knows? And I certainly did not imagine that I would have the, even the faintest possibility of going over to the UK to study for my PhD. And now that's become a reality because I've gone to such a fantastic university. Um, my advice to you guys is to obviously keep your eyes and ears open for opportunities, um, network as much as possible, but do what you love. Find something that really makes you passionate and makes you get up every day in the morning. It won't be work. It'll, it'll be fun that all of a sudden you get to do and it becomes your career. 